Great talk tonight with uh, your offensive line coach. Uh, uh, it's it's great seeing back at West Point uh, uh, this past year and uh, this season. Song is a great guy, and our kids love him, and so do I. All of our coaches. He just a great spirit and uh, and a terrific football coach. He, he he works really really hard at recruiting, and those are the things that a lot of people just on the outside can't see. What did you? What attracted you to bring him back? Uh, just who he is as a person, and uh, and he and he's an excellent football coach. And when when he was at uh, New Mexico with Bob Davy, uh, Bob, as you know, got sick and 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 couldn't coach there for a, a couple of games. And of all the coaches on the staff, um, they he hand selected Sanga to be the head coach, the the interim head coach. So it just tells you um, how well he connects with people and builds relationships with people. He builds those relationships with our players, most importantly. Uh, very easy to work with, very caring, uh, got a wonderful family. And, and uh, you know, just, you know I, 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 I've asked him to come back before, and, uh, and I'm glad we, we had an opportunity to, to, uh, to get him here last year. He just did a great job. So the him t saying that he was begging you was wrong. It was the opposite. Yeah, it was the opposite. I was begging him. <laughs> to come, so. And we finally, we finally were able to work it out. Coach, I mentioned uh, that uh, my early days covering Army, the uh, players weren't as big as they are today on the offensive line. Very unusual to have, have a player over 280 back uh, eight, nine years ago, but now that seems to be the standard. Uh, it seems he said that the strength and conditioning program really has made a difference. Uh, uh, for the uh, offensive linemen? I think so. I think uh, just since we've been here, really working to try to get those guys to be bigger and more physical and and uh, and just the, the people that we play, the level of football that we're playing at and, and the people that they've got to block and move at the point of attack, they just got to be bigger. So we really made a concerted after, effort to get guys that are longer that can carry more weight. And uh, so guys like J.B. Hunter and Peyton Reeder and, and Lucas McCleary, you know, those three guys are all graduating seniors off of last year's team. And they're all you know, tall, long guys that were able to carry 300 plus. And Coach, you said that you haven't really, uh, he hasn't been really watching a film of the upcoming opponents this season that you're just focusing on improving the team right now. Is there anything that you look at in the offseason at the schedule and the opponents that to uh, sort of start preparing uh, game plans for the season? The toughest opponent we've got is the one that practices on this practice field every day. And uh, we, we can do enough things to beat ourselves that, we, that our opponents wouldn't even have to concern themselves with, uh, with playing well. So we, we, we're just trying to get better fundamentally, our assignments and and uh, all the little things that, that matter. And, and there'll, be, there'll be time to get ready for our, our, our opponents in the fall. But now's not the time, I, I, I don't think, for that. It's really just to try to improve each one of these guys individually and, and try to be better prepared as a team. Jeff, seeing how games are available online for just about everybody, do you want your kids or would you encourage or discourage your kids from watching game film from last year of your future opponents would you would would you rather have the message come clear from you when the time comes I hope our guys are watching film and watching football all the time I'm, I do I love football I'm a football junkie and I hope they are too guys that love football seem to uh to maximize their potential as players so I don't I, I would never discourage a guy from looking at looking at football uh, of any kind, any time. But you want the message to be clear when the scouting report is made, though. Clear about what? By, I mean, you coaches w will watch a lot of film, and so you prepare a scouting report, you want them to be looking at exactly what you want them to do. Whereas if they're watching it on their own, they may come up with other preconceived notions? No, nah, I'm, I'm not going to give them that much credit. They, they, <laughs> they know better. They, uh, they listen to what our coaches tell them, and they try to execute the plans that we give them. And the more film they watch, the better it is. So they get a lot more familiar with the opponent or the guy that they're going to line up across from. And if they can gain something from that, then 
then I think it's great. And if a guy watches enough film and he sees a tendency or he sees something that he thinks will work, then I encourage our guys to tell us, I want to know. And, and uh, I don't care who comes up with the plan or the idea, if it's a good idea and it works and helps us win, it, it doesn't matter where it came from. Coach, talking about the offensive line in, the, in your offense, what characteristics are you looking for from centers, guards, tackles? Guys that are really tough and really physical and, and, and those, those being most important. But a guy that's got good feet and can bend and is flexible in our offense, they've got to play so low to the ground and, and with a flat back different than, than some other offenses. Um, you know, those, those, those qualities are certainly important. But are there specifics for each of those three positions as well? I think we value some things in, in, uh, in each of those positions, but we've had plenty of guys here that have played all five positions. You know, I think of a guy like Josh Boylan. I think he started a game for us at all five positions at some point in his career. Uh, and J.B. Hunter, he, he played center, he played guard, he played tackle, he played tight end. There's just some guys who are athletic enough, and ideally we'd find guys that could could really play all five positions because the 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 the, the offense is not designed based off of hey, we got to have these kinds of guys to tackle, and if, if we don't have these guys the kind of guys to tackle, it's it's going to be tough to run the offense. We we need a certain kind of lineman. And we just, we take the best five and we move them around until we find the best fit. Uh, and, and, and typically there, that means guys playing multiple positions until we figure that out. Mike Johnson, uh, around here a long time, played guard, played tackle, played, played both sides of the, of, the, uh, of the ball, you know, on the right side and the left side. So just, I think really the similar traits. There was a lot of that last year, would you agree? There was. Yeah. yeah. We had more so guys around. More so than maybe a couple previous years. Well, I look back to 2018. I think we, we started the same offensive line in in eleven of the thirteen games. So we stayed healthy and those guys were were able to kind of stay put in their positions. Um, but we haven't had that luxury all the time. And it's always an effort to put the best five in the game. Certainly we don't want to have we have three tackles uh, and, and, and we just say, hey, look, you're just a tackle. And for some reason, one of the offensive guards isn't quite as athletic, isn't quite as physical, isn't quite as, as good a player. Why would we sit the third tackle over there on the sideline with us when we could put him in the game? So oftentimes we are moving those guys around. Sure. <laughs> Coach, uh, another topic. Uh, over the winter, a study came out about uh, uh, injuries and concussions, and I believe Army participated in that study, monitoring the number of hits a player takes. Uh, was that something that uh, that you you learned something from? And uh, I know you've talked about uh, limiting contact for your veteran players, and uh, is that something that uh, that you learned uh, uh, more information from? We do. Any, anytime we can gather data, I think it, it, it helps us uh, really understand where we are and, and what we can do to, to protect our guys more. And, and I think it's important that we do those things, not only for our own team, but for the game of football. When I was at Georgia Southern as the head coach there, we got a grant to be able to, uh, to put a system uh, into our helmets and we had, oh, I don't know, 40 or 50 guys that, that uh, wore the HIT system, the sensors in their helmet that gave us data, immediate data on uh, where the, the, the blow was coming from, uh, the, the force of that blow. And it allowed our trainers to be able to, to monitor those guys, to check on them immediately. And then for us to study when we were having concussions where those hits were coming from. We, we're doing the same thing here, very similar, similar technology. And, uh, and I think it's beneficial. We wanna protect our guys. The health and safety of our players is the most important thing. Uh, and we, we have made great attempts to try to limit 
the the amount of contact, the, the the forceful contact to the head and neck. But it is football, and there's going to be times where where those those collisions happen. Um, so we want to we want to be calculated about uh, about when those happen in practice, how often we're putting those guys in those situations, and and uh, and the technology we have certainly can help. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, let's see. Well, since I've been here, um, and I guess maybe my last year or two at Georgia Southern. So, I mean, this would be going on my 10th year of, of gathering data like this with, uh, with the teams I've been a part of. Coach, I saw a note that you had, uh, you were fitting the players for a new style helmet this year. It's, uh, 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 is there a new, uh, uh, new capability in that helmet that you might be able to describe? I, I, I wouldn't want to speak on that uh, with any sort of uh, educated answer. I, I, I defer to, to Nick Detterman, who's our, our uh, head equipment manager, and, and he's, he's an expert. He's the best in the business. But there, there, are, there are just year after year companies coming, up with, coming out with new technology, new, uh, more protective equipment both for the head and for the rest of the body. And, and uh, it's amazing how different the helmets are, the shoulder pads are, the, the, just the thigh pads, knee pads, hip pads, all the protective gear, the shoes, uh, the cloth that we're wearing, jerseys and pants, how much that's changed and has not only made it more comfortable, but made it more protective. And the pads are lighter than they've ever been and they're sure. more protective than they've ever been. Uh, but the helmet is the piece of equipment that I think is the constant, uh, I, I, I guess, uh, the, 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 the strive for perfection. Uh, each one of those companies is looking for the best helmet, the best way to build a helmet that is comfortable, is light, uh, is protective, um, and, and so it's changing every year and, and I think they, they are getting better and they're improving each year. Uh, you know, the, the head is a, uh, is a tender piece of equipment and without a, a really good piece of equipment to protect it, we put these guys in grave danger. So, uh, that's the case with any collision sport, hockey and lacrosse and, and, uh, all the other sports that, that, uh, where there's contact with the head. We want to be as protective as we can. And, and so there are, there are new helmets out here, new technology, and we don't just throw all the old helmets away and order new helmets and put them all in the same one. Uh, we could do that, but all of the helmets we have do a good job protecting our guys. And we want to put them in the one that is the best for them. We've got, uh, we've got some guys that are in, custom designed helmet. So it was built just for their head. Um, and that's a technology that's out there as well. So a lot of, a lot of great things. And, and I'm glad to see that it's a great game and, and we want it to continue and to continue in a safe way. Absolutely. What was it like when you were playing high school ball and college ball? Did they just give you a helmet and say, here, put it on? Uh, you, you, we got fitted uh, and, and we found a helmet that was the best fit for us. There was certainly different kinds of helmets then. Um, some with an air bladder in them, like, like, like all of them have now, and some without, some without an air bladder, just, just the pads in there. Um, but we, we got fitted for the helmet and, and it was a good fit and it was important to the coaches. And, and I, think, I think every coach has a desire to, to outfit his team with good equipment and protect them. Um, and that's our duty as coaches. And so I, I felt well, well protected with, with as good of equipment as we had at that time. Certainly now the equipment is, is better, which is great. Yeah. My dad wore a leather helmet in high school, so. Really? <laughs> <laughs> folded up and put it in his pocket on the way home. <laughs> Coach, what's your thought for the rest of the week on your uh, uh, practice and training? Uh, excited about the scrimmage on Saturday. We're going to meet and lift just tomorrow and, and Thursday, which – Will give us a good recovery from today's practice and, uh, and, and really the mental part of the scrimmage 
so we can put guys out there, all of our guys, not just the veteran players, but the young guys too, and be able to make a defensive call or, or call an offensive play and, and really feel like they can go out there and execute without a coach standing right behind them. But we'll have some mistakes, but it's going to be fun to watch them compete, and I think they're looking forward to it.